Praise God. We're going to open up in uh, the scriptures. We're going to open up in Psalms 147, verses 1 through 12 in the Amplified Version. And I'm going to read this from my Bible. And I'm going to ask you to follow along uh, with me here on the screen. And I'll read, like I said, just please follow along attentively. It says in verse 1, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and lovely. Praise is becoming and appropriate. And in the New King James, it says, it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. Verse 2, the Lord is building up Jerusalem. He is gathering together the exiles of Israel. And in the New King James, it says the outcasts of Israel. Verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. He heals. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 4, he determines and counts the number of stars. I'm going to say that again. He determines and counts the number of stars. He calls them all by their names. Verse 5. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is inexhaustible and boundless. Meaning there's no end. It's infinite, his understanding. Verse 6. The Lord lifts up the humble and downtrodden. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Verse 7. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises with the harp or the lyre to our God. Verse 8. Who covers the heavens with clouds. Hallelujah. Who prepares rain for the earth. Hallelujah. May, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. Hallelujah. Verse 9. He gives to the beast his food and to the young ravens that for which they cry. Verse 10. He delights not in the strength of the horse, nor does he take pleasure in the legs of a man. Thank God because I've been skipping leg day. Verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord takes pleasure in those who reverently and worshipfully fear him, in those who hope in his mercy and loving kindness. Verse 12. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all that he is and all that he does. The title for today's message is Limitlessness. And I'm going to ask Nicole to keep that up on the screen because I want you to take a look at this. And when we speak of limitlessness, we speak of the limitlessness of our God of our Heavenly Father. And here, I chose a photo of the Sea of Galilee. Hallelujah. You can see the vastness and the beauty of it. Now, this is just a photo. For those of you who've been there personally, you, you really know how beautiful it is. I mean, it, it's really something else. But I want you to see, I want you to visualize what God spoke into existence. What he created for you and I. His power, his limitlessness. And I believe we are so caught up sometimes in our little worlds that we tend to forget or we take for granted the vastness around us, what he created. You know, we need to take a moment sometimes just to absorb what he created. 
really take in how limitless he is. Now, over a, a, a year ago, we went to Israel, and we had the pleasure of taking a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. Now, the Sea of Galilee is actually not a sea. It is a freshwater lake. It is the lowest freshwater lake uh, below sea level, okay, in the world, on Earth. It is 686 feet below sea level, second to the Dead Sea, which is actually a saltwater lake. So I just wanted to share that, some information. Now, we stayed a night in Tiberias, um, you know, overlooking the, the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. We, you know, we went to different areas, different cities, different sites, you know, surrounding the, this region, which is all great. And I believe you guys are going to Israel uh, to Sea of Galilee again, Pastor? So all that stuff is great. But most importantly... For the first timers, I encourage you to know that here on the Sea of Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee, near the Sea of Galilee, Jesus performed many miracles. Many miracles. Some of which we're going to review today, and one we're going to read through in Matthew chapter 14. Now, before we get into the, into the verses of Matthew chapter 14, I'd like to take a, a moment and give an account of what is happening at this time in the scriptures. Because it's important to keep it in the context of the word of God, in the sequence of the word of God. So here in Matthew chapter 14, John the Baptist is beheaded in prison. Now, that's a whole nother truth in itself. It's not a story. It's a truth for you to meditate on. But John the Baptist is beheaded in prison. The disciples take the body of John, and they bury him. They tell Jesus what had occurred. They tell Jesus, John the Baptist has been beheaded. We buried him. So Jesus heard of it. He departed on a boat from where they were, okay? Now, the multitudes that heard that Jesus went on the boat and went on his way followed him from land on foot. So here's Jesus on a boat riding on the Sea of Galilee, and here's a multitude of people following him on the land waiting for him to come back ashore, okay? And immediately when I read this, one of the names of the Lord came to me, Jehovah-Ra, hallelujah, which is the Lord my shepherd. You see, nothing was stopping these people to follow Jesus, Nothing should stop us from following him. Now, when Jesus went ashore, he had compassion for them. And he healed and cured their sick. Meaning whoever was sick, he healed them. And I want you to know, miracle of healing. And then another name of the Lord came to me, Jehovah Rapha, hallelujah, the Lord heals. And when evening came, the disciples realized that they were in a deserted place, they were in an isolated place, and that they should tell the multitudes to go on their merry way. Go on into the villages and go buy yourself some food. But Jesus said, no. They do not need to go away. 
He said, give them. Give them something to eat. The disciples were like, but we don't got nothing. We only have five loaves and two fish. Jesus says, give it to me. Give me all that you have. And he looked to heaven. He blessed. He broke the loaves and gave it to his disciples so that his disciples, in turn, can give it to the multitudes. And it goes on to say, so everyone ate. Everyone ate. The word of God tells us is 5,000 people ate. 5,000 men, not including women and children. Now, right away, when I read this, I hear 5,000 men, you know, not including women and children. I need to do a calculation in my head now. So I'm thinking maybe half of these guys got a woman. A woman got maybe one or two children. So we're talking about like 10, 12,000 people probably. I'm just assuming. But the word of God says they still had 12 baskets of food filled left over. Amen. Now, we're thinking 10,000 people. Think how many hands in this present day, how many hands that would take our restaurant owners? How many hands would that take to serve, to prepare, to cater to these people? It took one man, Jesus Christ. Miracle. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah, our provider. Praise God. Now let's read, let's continue in Matthew chapter 14, and as I always do, I encourage you to read this on your own, and you know, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you guys individually. But Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, Nicole, please, again, I'll read, I ask you to follow along. Then it goes on to say, then he directed the disciples Jehovah Ra, <laughs> hallelujah. The Lord, my shepherd, directed the disciples to get into the boat and go before him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he sent away the crowds. Now, previously, the disciples wanted to send away the crowds, right? Right? But how many of you know that the Lord's ways are higher than our ways? And when we get there, we're going to see why. Verse 23. And after he had dismissed the multitudes, Jesus, he went up into the hills by himself to pray when it was evening and he was still there alone. Note here. Sometimes we need to have discernment to disengage, to separate from the multitudes so that we can spend time with our Heavenly Father in prayer. Amen. Verse 24. But the boat was by this time out on the sea, many furlongs. A furlong is one-eighth of a mile distance from the land. Beaten and tossed by the waves, for the wind was against them. Wind and waves against each other means a pretty rough sea. 
verse 25. And in the fourth watch between 3 and 6 a.m. of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. Verse 26. Wait, go back. Verse 25. Miracle. Walk on the sea. Verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they saw the miracle happen in front of them. They were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they screamed out with fright. Verse 27. But instantly he spoke to them saying, take courage, I am. Another name of the Lord. I am limitlessness. He said, stop being afraid. Verse 28. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Verse 29. He said, Jesus, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on water. And he came towards Jesus. Another recorded miracle. Now Peter walked on water just as Jesus walked on water. And Peter simply said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come. And Jesus' response was simple. He said, come. We need to hear that still voice. It's a simple response. Come. And just as Peter, we too need to ask the Lord, if it is you, command me, Lord. Command me to heal that person in your name. Command me to cast out that demon in your name. Command me to move this mountain in your name. Command me to share. Command me to give. Command me to bless, Lord. And when you hear that still voice of the Lord say, yes, come. And you act on that command. You take that step. Hallelujah. You believe his word is true. With God, we see anything is possible. Hallelujah. Verse 30. But when he perceived, this is speaking of Peter. But when he perceived, he, Peter, flesh Peter, perceived and felt the strong wind, he was frightened. And as he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me from death. (laughs) Perceived. He saw with his natural eyes and the strong wind he felt, meaning his natural senses hit him. And when Peter doubted just for a moment, everything changed. 31. Instantly, Jesus reached out his hand, praise God, and caught and held him, saying to him, Oh, you little of faith, why did you doubt? Verse 32. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. The Lord is near. Jehovah, Shama, he is present. Verse 33. And those in the boat knelt and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. This reveals a lot. Even in our present walk with the Lord, we come to our shepherd, to the Lord Jesus. We start to follow him. 
And some of us are healed of a sickness. Some of us delivered from a hardship, an addiction, an oppression, a depression, whatever it may be. And he delivers us. Some of us, he makes provision for in our lives. And we're all fired up in the spirit. Miracles, signs, and wonders start to occur all around us. God's limitlessness surrounds us. And here comes a little disturbance. A little windstorm. And we start to sink in our feelings. And we look at what we see with our eyes, our natural eyes. And we start to perceive. And what we start to perceive dictates what we believe. We forget his limitlessness. We forget that he got us through it. You see, we're the ones who put the limit on. God is limitless. God is infinite. God is eternal. God is supernatural. God is boundless. And we say this often. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher of our what? Not our sight, our faith. Give me Psalms 78, 35 through 43, Nicole, please. And I'm going to read this quickly. Then they remembered, then they remembered, then they remembered, then they remembered that God was their rock. And the Most High God, their Redeemer. Verse 36. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth, and they lied to him with their tongues. We need to stop flattering God with our tongues. Stop trying to say whatever you want to say just so you can get from him. Verse 37. For their heart was what? Not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. Verse 38. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. Verse 39. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. Verse 40, how often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Verse 41, yes, again and again and again and again and again and again, they tempted God and they did what? Limited. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Verse 42, they did not remember his power. They forgot. The day when he redeemed them from the enemy, they forgot. Verse 43, when he worked his signs in Egypt, they forgot. And his wonders in the field of Zoan, again, they forgot. Give me Romans chapter 11, verse 33 in the Amplified. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unfathomable, inscrutable, unsearchable are his judgments, his decisions. And how untraceable, mysterious, undiscoverable are his ways, his methods, his paths. And as soon as I read this, immediately I'm brought back to Matthew chapter 14 and the very end of this uh, chapter. You see, what doesn't make sense sometimes, it makes faith. Actually, all the time. I said sometimes, all the time. Jesus told his disciples, get on the boat to meet him on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And in the middle of the storm, 
in the middle of rough waters, when they got through it all, on the other side was awaiting them miracles of healing. Awaiting them were people hungry for Jesus Christ. So give me this, Nicole. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding regions, brought to him all who were sick. Verse 36, and begged him that they might only touch, man, the faith, that they may only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 11, verse 36, Amplify. We're going to close with this. Limitlessness, my brothers and sisters. Limitlessness, God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. For all things originate with him and come from him. All things live through him and all things center in and tend to consummate and to end in him. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. You cannot live your life here on earth without the one who created you, Elohim. Your shepherd, your redeemer, your healer, your provider your deliverer, your protector, your rock, your strength. And I can keep going on and on of all the benefits of God. Make a decision to follow him. The only one who can give you true life. The only one who can give you eternal life. And if you want to make that decision right now, I ask that you pray this simple prayer with me. God, Forgive me of all my sins. I repent and I turn away from all my sins. Today, I ask Jesus to come into my life. I make him my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you that he rose from the dead and he is resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on my behalf. If you said this simple prayer, you are born again. Jesus saved you from eternal death. Seek him. Continue in Jesus' name. Be discipled. If it is here at Hudson Church or another church that is Holy Spirit-led, Bible-based, we encourage you to come here in Jesus' name. I thank you for your time in Jesus' name. Amen.